what's happening people welcome back to another episode of how to be a baller a versus podcast where we talk to some of the biggest ballers in the game about their inspirational journeys to get to the top we've had some amazing episodes so far and this week's guest is a guest who really has an inspirational journey a lot of footballers in the premier league typically come through academies but this is someone who's traveled far and wide to achieve his dream his teammates call him captain america He's the face of the national team. He's won a German Cup. He's had a major transfer already. And he's someone who's looking to take the Premier League by storm in the upcoming years. It's none other than Christian Pulisic. But before we go into that, it's only right I speak to my teammates, the versus alumni, to really understand what their thoughts are about this baller. So today we have the two Jays. We have Johnny and Jacob. How are you guys doing? I'm doing good, thank you. Yeah, it's good Good to be here. Yeah, likewise, man. Likewise. Looking forward to getting into this one with a top baller. So I guess the probably the best place to start is why does Christian fit the profile of the conversation we're trying to have here for you guys? I can only speak from my personal perspective. I don't know about you guys, but I have such a fascination with ballers from the US. You know, such a big deal has been made out of the fact that a lot of our young English players are moving abroad, you know, to go and heighten and advance their careers, you know, for years, we've really hang, hung, sorry, a lot of our content around Jaden Sancho and his journey. The thing with America is that that is part of their culture. You know, players almost have to leave to go and advance their careers. So for me, I'm always looking so keenly to see where US football players are really going to take their game. And I think that, you know, Christian Pulisic is one of, a really exciting breed of young American players. Um, that for us, in terms of our lens, like I think is really interesting to look at because it's a different way of starting their footballing careers. And I think, you know, we all know that in years to come, the US may well benefit from that massively. You know, Pudisic is 22. He's got 34 caps for the US team already. Um, so for me, that like slight different, you know, cultural angle in terms of entry into the game, uh, for me, like really interests me and I'm excited to hear what, he says about his upbringing and you know, how that's impacted his playing career. I think as well, like despite being so young, he's the leader of this new generation coming through. This excite, probably, arguably, the most exciting US generation there's there's, there's been. Uh, he's the most expensive US player of all time when he joined Chelsea. But like, you know, even before that, he showcased exactly what he was doing at Dort- like what he's about at Dortmund. It's the highest profile sort of player there that was like you know, making strides as a big European club, like joined when he was 15, I think. And now, you know, since then he just hit the ground running and was just like, you could see immediately, me being a Liverpool fan, especially like with that Klopp dynamic of like, I was, you know, he was touted to be joining Liverpool for quite a while because he joined Chelsea in the end for a big fee. And like his development um, has been pretty astounding, to be honest, you know, and that's, been followed not only by like fans over in the states but by like the players as well undoubtedly like they've been inspired by him to you know he's provided the blueprint of success for Bundesliga players like Weston McKenney who was a Schalke Gio Reyna uh, at his old club Dortmund Tyler Adams and I think even with the likes of Zach Steffen the City goalkeeper Anthony Robinson uh, Fulham left back Owen Osoe, the Wolves midfielder. I think, you know, these guys are all kind of breaking through into the Premier League and they have undoubtedly looked at him as the model guy um, to be, like, looking up to as this as this figurehead for this new generation of players. So it's an incredibly exciting time to be a player in that setup, as in the UN, US men's national team. And ahead of World Cup next summer, fingers crossed, like, it's an exciting time, an exciting time for everyone, fans and players alike. A hundred percent. And I think when you add all of that with the mix of the fact that this is a young player at Dortmund who had so much competition from really, really high calibre ballers, worked with some amazing coaches. I want It's nice insight to understand what that was like for him, especially having to travel to fulfil your dreams. And 
it's it's credit to him for getting to the Premier League. And this is essentially, it's not even the beginning of his career, but it feels like it's the beginning of something big for him because, mm. of course, getting that number 10 shirt is a massive responsibility after the person he's taking it off. But you can really see, hopefully, the start of something amazing with, with this player, not just on the national front, but a club front, and just in terms of what he symbolises for American, for soccer or football in America. Because now, if you see a profile like that doing things in the Premier League, that can potentially change the whole narrative of what sports rank highly in America now. So massive, massive conversation with a big, big baller. Once again, massive shout out to Nike for the hookup again. And without further ado, this is How to Be a Baller with Christian Pulisic. It's so great to have you because I guess you represent a new generation of baller in terms of your your path to the Premier League, in terms of how you came to the Premier League but how did football start for you back in America? Yeah it's a, it's a crazy story I mean both my parents um, just so happened to play soccer and they both played in college in America together um, same school and that's how they met and um, yeah bringing me up I just they just always had a soccer ball around a football around as you might say and uh, yeah I just grew up loving the game playing all the time and uh yeah, somehow made it here. And then going back to that, I guess, when did you sort of realise early on that they were such football fanatics and what sort of impact did that have on you? I know you mentioned that you were always playing football, but when did you start piecing it together and thinking, oh, okay, well, this is, there's a trend here? Uh, yeah, I would say just after school when, I mean, in America, not a lot of kids are, are kicking the ball around after school. It's a, it's a lot of other sports. So... I'd say, yeah, I would come home and, you know, my dad would be there with, with, with the ball and we'd just be out, out in the back and kicking the ball about and kids would come around and be like, what are you doing, you know? And uh, when it was like that every day, it was like, yeah, I, just, I was like, all right, so this is going to be, this is how it's going to be. So it was, uh, it was always good though. No, I totally get you. And that's um, a really interesting tangent. I'm sure we'll get more into about that switch now because of your impact I'm sure now a lot more kids are playing football in their backyard with their parents compared to when you were playing football with your parents and it was probably I mean basketball sports like that right I'm guessing yeah exactly and I played all those sports every day after school you know I'd be with my friends first of all playing those things but you know as soon as I got back and had some time for myself I had to uh yeah I'd do what I loved and that was obviously kicking the ball around and uh yeah still doing it so and what's really interesting is you come from a really notable part of America. I mean, um, it's nicknamed what the sweetest place on earth, Hershey, right? But growing up in such a place like that, where it's known for different things and being in a situation like you mentioned, where you're, you and your family were more football, but everything else was different. Who was sort of, who was you looking up to as a youngster playing football? Yeah, I mean... First and foremost was always my dad, obviously. He, he actually played professionally in the States um, for a while. So, you know, I always looked up to him. Um, and then there was uh, some of my favorites, some of my idols. One of the biggest one I'd say was Luis Figo. I was watching him, which not a lot of people say because he had quite a controversial career, but uh, he was my favorite. He was my favorite player growing up. And uh, yeah, I just loved watching him. So if we fast forward to where we are now, you mentioned before we jumped on lockdown in London, you find yourself in England, but you're well-traveled as well. That's one thing that's quite documented about you. In terms of your experiences of traveling around for different reasons, how did that impact your desire to want to play football? And specifically, probably that little stint you had in England early on, how did that sort of build to the story and make you really want to pursue your dream? Yeah, I mean, all the traveling I've done has had a huge impact on that, for sure. And uh, that, yeah, like you said, that little stint in England was was actually huge for me. A lot of people don't realize that, that I lived there for a year when I was younger. And that was such a, an important time for me because uh, I was still kind of getting into the sport. You know, I liked playing, but I wasn't sure I wanted to, you know, go that, that route with my, you know, with my career. But um, obviously at a young age after school, you know, here in England, the culture is just so different. And it is football every day after school. And, and that was me. I was there for hours and hours just playing. My parents had to drag me home um, from the court after school. So, um, yeah, I just I began to love it. And I think that's what really, you know, started to grow my passion for the sport. 
and uh yeah once i once i got back from the states after that experience you know after school i was like i was trying to drag my friends to come you know play some football with me and um obviously that's tough sometimes over there but i think that's what really helped me out a lot and then one thing that always really stood out for me as well is not just the fact that you're american but all of us in general, our experiences and our backgrounds pay a pivotal part in who we are. How much does that influence you in terms of like your creation descent and the traveling? Yeah, I mean, the creation descent is something I'm extremely proud of. Um, obviously, I've been able to go there a few times. Um, football was huge. Uh, my grandfather, who was also just such a hero of mine, um, he, uh, yeah, he showed my dad the game and, and my dad is obviously the one who, you know, started showing it to me. So that's something that I'm very proud of. And then obviously being from America. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's cool. I like being different over there. I like, you know, playing the sport that's maybe not the biggest, but, um, you know, like you said, there's hopefully a lot more kids kicking the ball around after school, you know, maybe because of me partially, you know, because of other players that are now doing so well, Americans. And uh, yeah, that makes me really proud. We, we briefly mentioned about you traveling and one thing that does stand out especially about your travels is a lot of North American, South American players make that big decision to take the trip overseas to try and play in the top European leagues. Your journey happened quite early on in your career and you went to Germany quite young. I know we spoke about you being in England and how that impacted you. But at that moment when you were traveling to Germany to pursue this dream, what sort of mentality did you have to have and, and where was you at as a person? Because that must have been quite a, a big moment. Yeah, uh, by far, uh, my first year in Germany was the toughest year of my life. Uh, it, was a, it was a massive decision, a lot of time, a lot of thought, and, you know, conversations went into that, just me and my family and, you know, tell, you know my parents just telling me, look, it's, it's going to be tough, you know, it's not just going to be easy going over there to a foreign country and trying to make it professionally. You know, you still have a long way to go. It's not like I'm going over there, you know, a full member of the first team. I got to prove myself. I got a lot of stuff to go through. And uh, yeah, it, it, it was, uh, it took a lot of sacrifice. Uh, mentally it was, was not easy. There was tough days, a lot of tough days, um, but I went over there and uh, I had one, one dream in mind and I wasn't going to stop until I reached it. So um, I'm really happy I made that decision, obviously. And yeah somehow it got me here like I said there's a certain amount of self-confidence that you need in yourself to say that you know I'm going to go and I'm going to give it my best shot and, and reach the top and to sign for Borussia as well in itself is a mega co-sign to your talent because we know that in terms of world football that's one club that looks for the best young talent and then brings them into the squad so not only did they find you you then were fast-tracked to the first team 17 after um performing really well so how did it feel then to be in this sort of position where you're with some really really talented youngsters as well having made that journey because I mean you had the likes of Sancho Hakimi was on loan I believe Michi he's loan like you packed team yeah I uh, know there were some incredible players I mean that was a, that was the crazy thing even when I first signed over there and I was training with you know the U17s it was at the time over there just uh, guys just competing every single day because they, you know, they want to be on that first team. And that was everything. And, and I was doing the same and fighting every day. And, and that's what it really took to finally, you know, once I finally did make it to the first team and, and was a full member, it was like almost like such a relief. Like I'd made it, you know, made it there that I could finally show kind of my stuff. But up until then, it was, it was a big fight. And I had to prove that, you know, that I was ready to, ready to make that step. What? What's it like being in that sort of high pressure environment though, where that everyone wants to succeed, everyone knows what's at stake. And like you mentioned, it's the under 17 team was a really good team as well. Like being a, a young professional, what sort of things help you get through that moment or make you continue striving to, to go for it? Yeah, it's just that, it's just that goal, that dream that you have in, in your mind. It's really comes down to who wants it the most. Obviously, there was so many talented kids on that team uh, that could easily make it to the first team. But in the end, it's the guys that are the most dedicated, the ones that are yeah, willing to really put the work in, the extra work in. And uh, yeah, that's really what it takes to if you want to make it to that next level. Because like I said, guys are competing you know, for contracts, for 
you know, they want to be on that first team. They want a spot in there. And uh, yeah, that's just, that's just the friendly competition that there is. And I guess the reason why that moment in your career sticks out so much to me is because even though you're still quite early in your career, you've had so many big moments. Another big moment came soon after where you were subject to your transfer, made you the most expensive North American football of all time. But being a young player in that moment, explain the sort of emotions and feeling when a lot of people are probably looking at what you're doing already, but suddenly because of such a big moment for you, there's no, there's new attention to you. There's new fan base looking at you and it's sort of like, oh, this, this kid must be special looking. How does that feel, especially coming at quite a young age as well? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's still crazy to me. Uh, I mean, playing in the, in the Premier League was something that I always wanted to do and it was a huge dream of, of mine. And uh, yeah, once I finally had that opportunity and um, yeah, to really go play in the biggest league in the world, I mean, it was something I couldn't pass up on and I was just so excited to, to go do it. And obviously everything that comes with it is amazing. The support from everyone, uh, like you said, the new fans, the people, especially back home in the States, how much the sport is growing and, and just seeing that happen before me in, in the last couple of years, you know, now that I've made this step and it's, yeah, it's, it's actually remarkable and it does make me really proud. Being someone who had a father that played a professional game and a father that has coaching background, how important is coaching to you? Because you've man you've benefited from having some really good managers during your career as well and some great players around you. So how important is that aspect, especially such as a, a young bowler? Yeah, it's, it's, it's super important um, having the right, having the right coach who's uh, yeah, help, help and bring you along. Obviously I've been given amazing opportunities from, from, from the coaches that I've had. And I'm so thankful for all of them, um, honestly, because uh, you know, without them that, you know, they're the ones that truly in the end, you know, are the ones who make the decisions, put you on the, on the pitch and, and uh, give you that trust and someone who, someone who trusts you and uh, yeah, really, really wants to make you better. You know, sometimes if that means being hard on you, then, then that's what it is. But you know that it's, it's because they just want you to be better. And uh, yeah, those, those are the coaches that, that yeah, really stick with you in the end. And, and uh, I'm so thankful for, for the coaching that I've had so far. If we think about sort of like your journey in football so far now and what your national team means to you and what the future that means to you. I know you once said, that you would like for America to follow in the footsteps of Germany when it came to football. What do you want and envision the future of American football being? Yeah, that, that, that's, that's the big question. Uh, the reason that, you know, I've said you want it to be, you know, more of a system like Germany, like, like Europe is because I just think that we do have steps to take as far as, you know, especially in the, in the youth age groups, as I mentioned before, going over and, and competing, you know, when I was 15, 16 years old, fighting for professional contracts. I've never seen that, that type of intensity and that in and out every day, that, that drive in these kids to, to fighting for a professional contract. It's just, uh, you know, the system is, is a bit different over in the States, not saying that it's, you know, not good in a lot of ways, but I just think it does have, it does have some, you know, some ways to go. And uh, yeah, that's, that's all I mean by that. But I, I just, I hope that it's going to be a country where, yeah, the, the academies continue to grow. Um, like we mentioned before, hopefully kids are just out and, and, and that just becomes kind of a, a soccer, as they call it, culture over there. And, and it, it just starts to grow and grow and, and kids are just really wanting to wanting to play football growing up. And, and that's that's the main goal because there's obviously so many other sports and, and kids that want to play those sports and that might not change, but just continuing to grow the sport uh, as much as we can. And I guess what's a great benefit as well is there's so many young ballers now representing the national team playing in different leagues I guess the prominence of the profile of American football globally has changed so much and it's almost like a golden generation is forming that you now there's hope that that can continue and there can be more superstars coming up from the nation I guess yeah exactly and, and that's the goal um there's so many there's so many good players you know American players at, at, at massive clubs now and I hope people start to realize that and, you know, maybe put a little bit more respect on the, you know, the American, you know, soccer name. And, and I hope that that's a, yeah, it's a, it's a really exciting, really exciting thing. That's 
an interesting thread there because do you do you feel for like a long time maybe there wasn't that due to the fact that people just assumed there was so much popularity with the other sports yeah that's tough to say I mean I think I think people definitely do have that you know idea in their head that you know Americans are especially good at those other sports you know the American footballs the basketballs I'm not saying that they're disrespecting American soccer player or, you know, I've had some kind of disadvantage. I'm just saying that uh, hopefully that people can, you know, look at that list of American, you know, footballers and and be like, wow, there's some, there's some top players on here and uh, know that when they're going to play the, you know, the U S national team, even that it's, it's never going to be easy. So that's, that's kind of where we want to be. For sure. The last year has been really interesting because the world has been in a pandemic. There's been loads of notable moments which have really shifted the world to its its core and made people think and reflect. But what's really come out that's really unique is footballers more than ever being role models in society, especially younger players. Is this something that's quite important to you uh, as a professional? Yeah, I I mean, I think it's very important. I think you know, like you've mentioned, people that have been stepping up and, and using, I mean, obviously, uh, as footballers, um, do, do have some kind of platform and, and using that to, to really help with anything that they see fit in this world and something they want to see change in. I think it's absolutely a good idea to, to use your voice and, yeah, and, and do everything you can to, to try to better that, better that cause or whatever it is that, that you're into. And I think, I think that's something that, that I have. And there's some things that have, you know, been quite close to me and, and, and I've, you know, tried to use my platform as well and uh, hopefully continue to do so because it is, it is cool to see. What moment in your career so far stands out the most and why? Because you've had some really, really great moments. I mean, you broke records in the Bundesliga. You've been crowned American Football of the Year, which is a massive achievement. Conca final, won German Cup. Like, came to Chelsea, got the number 10 shirt. There's been so many moments with different reasons that have been really great for you, but which one stands out the most to you and, and why is that? Yeah, that's tough. Uh, obviously, a lot of the ones that stick in your heads are, are, are the debuts, um, especially at Dortmund. My professional debut uh, was just something, one of the proudest moments of my life. There was my national team debut, which I'll never forget. Uh, was just such a, you know, another, a whole nother feeling, but another really proud moment. But I'd have to say uh, the biggest one is, is, is kind of the transfer to Chelsea and um, yeah, making this, this dream of mine a reality. Uh, it's just, I mean, I remember being home that summer and, and just wearing my Chelsea jersey, like thinking like, wow, this is real, you know, like this is really, really happening. So um, absolutely, you know, the proudest moment that that I've, you know, experienced so far. And I'm just grateful that I yeah, have the opportunity to be here. And if you were to, or if you were able to look at your journey so far and speak to your younger self, what would you say to your younger self? I think I would definitely say really just to take in every single moment that's happening because it, it does go by so fast and make sure, you know, make sure you really, you remember those times and enjoy it in the moment because a lot of the times I'm putting so much pressure on myself, you know, when I'm having a debut, when I'm, you know, in a big game, I would just tell myself really just to take a step back and, and, and realize what you're doing for a second, because um, it doesn't happen for everyone. It's, you know, it's, it, it's such an honor to, to do the things that I've been doing. So I would definitely just say, remember to enjoy every moment because yeah, the career's career is pretty short. It's going by fast already. So no, I, I totally hear that. And I'm sure you're going to have loads of other moments that you will get to take in. But honestly, Christian, thank you so, so much for your time. I've been Myra Quadri, and this has been another episode of How to Be a Baller.